All right, it's 12 one. I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna mute everyone just so I can kind of keep my uh, keep my sanity. Um, okay. So welcome to 15 Minutes of Positivity. It's Friday. We're heading into the weekend, so I like to try to focus on on something that can that has some little bit of staying power. So for those of you that are new to this, the the idea is that we get together once a day, literally for 15 minutes. Realistically, by the time we get started, it's more like, I don't know, nine minutes or 10 minutes. Um, but nonetheless, we activate these parts of our brain and our nervous system that if we engage in those 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 networks on a regular basis, it helps us sort of recalibrate a kind of new normal, a new sense of groundedness in mindfulness, in attention training, and resilience, and gratitude, forgiveness, and so forth. So um, that's the whole point uh, for doing these sessions. Um, so today's, I don't know, quote or theme, if you will, is the following. Experiences without self-reflection are just happenings. And so I learned this phrase when I was a I was a wilderness guide for a few years, and the idea was we would take uh, people out into the into the wilderness. So every ranging from Patagonia to Wyoming, Alaska, places like that, and we would teach certain wilderness survival skills as they were relevant in the moment. So, for example, a river crossing. Right, you're looking at a river and it's icy cold and it's moving fast and the question is okay so how do you get from here to there and the idea is to say okay in this moment is the most relevant or pertinent time to teach the specific skill meaning we need to stop and reflect on what's happening right here right now because if we if we if we're not aware that it's happening right now it's just a one of the many things that is just you could consider a kind of happening um, and this happens all day long, right? We have lots of happenings throughout the day where it's just like, yeah, this, th that just happened. I'm not really registering. I'm not really reflecting. I'm not really engaging in it. It just happened. And so the question is, can we use those those moments as, uh, we, we call them teachable moments. So a river crossing is a pretty significant teachable moment if you're needing to cross a, you know, a river that's really cold and might might kill you if you don't do it right. Um, so this reminds me of a quote from Suzuki Roshi, who's a Zen teacher. And he said, the most important thing is remembering the most important thing. So as we're going through life and as we're bumping into some of the uncertainties or the discomforts of life, just rem being able to, to, to rally and remember what is most important to us in that moment is ultimately the most important thing because it determines everything that you know where we go and then this idea of beginner's mind enters the picture so the beginner's mind there are many possibilities and the expert's mind there are few meaning we can get pretty attached to certain uh, ways of being or certain outcomes or um and we can, you know, that creates kind of myopic view of, oh, this is the way things are supposed to be. This worked out for me last time. So surely this is the way it should go this time. And so that's that's what we mean, like the expert's view. It's like, I've done this before. I know how this goes. And so it creates this myopic uh, view of things rather than the beginner's mind, which is, I have no idea what's going to happen next. So maybe if I just stay open and I... As long as I remember that what's most important to me, I'm willing to, to lean into you know whatever is about to happen next with a sense of openness and possibility. And here's what's going on neurologically when we do so. So this is a time lapse image. I've watched this so many times, and it's endlessly fascinating to me. But these are neurons or neural networks that are connecting with each other over time and of course the connections are stimulated by experience so whatever we're experiencing repeatedly is what stimulates these these connections and so you end up with these what we'd call networks in the brain that have to do with 
pain or joy or awe or happiness or fear, whatever it is, our brain just adapts and, and strengthens networks over time. So in the spirit of that, <clears throat> let's, um, let's practice today. Let's, let's, so go ahead and close your eyes. And let's start by activating the part of ourself that can simply notice what's happening right here, right now. The word that I used for this earlier this week on Monday was direct contact with reality. And it just means that we're able to connect with the raw sensation before we attach a story or a narrative to it. So before we add in, oh, this is good, this is bad, this is comfortable, that shouldn't have happened, whatever that is, the step before that is just raw sensation. So noticing in breath, the body breathing, and out breath, the body expelling CO2. Just noticing that this is happening all the time on its own. Doesn't require me to intervene or tell the body how to breathe. The body knows. <clears throat> so just dropping into a place of simply noticing and bearing witness. So introducing this idea of beginner's mind, noticing how there's, there's an inflection point where no matter what the experiences that we're having, so right here, right now, there's direct contact with sensation in the body, maybe even a feeling tone, just noticing how all of that happens before the mind kicks in and starts spinning a story or a narrative. I'm not saying that the narrative is wrong or it's bad, it's useful. But it's also good to notice that there is an experience before the story kicks in. See if you can stay in that place before A narrative happens. So stay in beginner's mind. And for me, the access point is oftentimes breath, just making contact with the simple sensation of the body breathing in, body breathing out. Bearing witness. Not discounting expertise or 
proficiency or knowledge. It's very useful and it can also really get us into trouble. So going back to beginner's mind, noticing what, what is it like to be before the stories kick in. I'm doing this right, I'm doing this wrong. I should, I shouldn't. What's the place before that happens? And just keep pulling on that thread of direct contact with sensation in the body. If you're looking for other contact points with, with direct sensation, focus on the feet. Notice what the feet feel like. Focus on the palms of the hands. Sensation, temperature, feeling. Noticing the belly. Missing the chest, the heart. Beginner's mind is all about noticing what happens before the stories kick in, before the stories of what should or shouldn't be. Whether things are right or wrong or good or bad, just noticing direct contact with sensation, body. Very simple, but surprisingly difficult to maintain. And so that's also okay, it's just noticing how the mind wants to interject and make things more complicated or wants to add stories and narrative to every situation. It's not bad, it just is the way things are. And so our ability to drop back into direct contact with sensation beginner's mind. And go ahead and take a deep breath in. Hold it. Exhale through the mouth all the way. All the air out and then hold five. Four, three, two, one. Deep inhale through the nose. Hold. Long exhale through the mouth. Again, hold the five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead, open your eyes. 
already it's already 12 16 so i'm a little over sorry for that um yeah let's drop back into the here and now and hopefully uh this reminder of beginner's mind is is, is helpful for for the rest of the day and the weekend <laughs> 